Here's a question that I have been asked for almost 45 years in my career as uh, being a jeweler, and that is, how do I know that I get my same diamond back when I leave it for repair? It's a question you know you shouldn't be embarrassed to ask because unless you're a graduate gemologist yourself, you know there are so many imitations and similar looking diamonds and similar looking imitation stones. Uh, the average person, you know, usually just doesn't know how to tell. So I'm going to walk you through our take-in procedure whenever you're leaving a diamond for any kind of repair work. Uh, first thing that we do, you're going to sit down with us and we're going to take pictures using our microscope camera. And as we take these pictures, we will be saving them and uh, in digital format and emailing them to you or putting them on the disk if you prefer and we can also print them and uh, these pictures will be taken under uh, minimum of 50 power magnification and all the way up to uh, 200 power magnification. So every diamond has some something unique about it. And the key is to know what you have. We have this little machine here that will test. Um, it says whether it's a diamond or a moissanite or an imitation. So uh, we just touch this to the and you notice that it lights up as being a diamond. Of course, this is not foolproof, um, but you know, just another check that we did. Most times, diamonds come in here and they need to be cleaned, so it's hard to tell what is an inclusion, a natural um, birthmark in the diamond, uh, or what is maybe just some dirt or some oils from uh, hand lotion, etc. So, first thing we'll do is we'll snap a few pictures and we'll save those. And uh, we'll take some measurements. And then we'll go downstairs and clean the diamond with our ultrasonic machine and our steam cleaner. And uh, of course, you're always welcome to join us. It's a little bit of a trip downstairs. I'll take you down and uh, you can see what's involved there. When we come downstairs and clean a ring, you know what we'll do is uh, there's an ultrasonic machine that has a soapy solution in it that sends sound vibrations uh, through the solution, and uh, that will remove the oils from the diamond. Um, diamonds collect oils, and uh, you know clean the dirt, anything that might be under on the underside that uh, we don't want to take a picture of. And uh, you know, usually we'll soak it for a minute or two. Uh, this is a steam cleaner, which will shoot out a, a high pressure uh, steam uh, to clean on the underside of the diamond. Uh, so. so after we have it uh, cleaned, we'll bring it back up here and take some new pictures, save them, and uh, email them to you or uh, print them or put them on a CD, whatever you prefer. Uh, but these are great to have for your records. And uh, you know, we can point out many uh, very unique qualities about your diamond. And we've got it on 200 power magnification here now. And you can see every detail. This is a very nice diamond, so we won't really see um, much as far as inclusions, but I guess that's one of the characteristics, that it doesn't have many. One thing, you know, that um, a lot of um, uh, modern diamonds will have will be a certification. And uh, that will include a laser engraved number on the edge of the diamond that will match the certification. 
Now this doesn't have one because this diamond happens to be about 35 years old. Here's the uh, edge of the diamond. And you know, we'll, we'll take several different views, like we'll definitely take some pictures of the side view of the ring so you can see how thick the prongs are and how well it's set. Now here's a case where, you know, this um, prong right here is definitely on the thin side and over on the other side, it's actually broken right off. There's no prong right here. So part of the documentation when you're leaving your diamond here for any kind of repair work uh, is measuring it. And we have this uh, Presidium millimeter gauge which is all digital and um, the measurement the diameter on this diamond is 6.71 millimeters oh, 2 millimeters in one direction so that's down to a hundredth of a millimeter and then we'll measure it from the other direction too because even though it looks round it's usually not exactly so this is 6.67 millimeters and we will document this uh, in the, the computer. Taking accurate measurements, that's just another way to identify your diamond. Um, you know, it's, it's very hard to come up with another diamond with uh, the exact dimensions and clarity characteristics, um, faceting characteristics uh, of your diamond. Uh, another identifying feature is some diamonds for us under ultraviolet light. And we have a UV light here that we can test this on. So one of the key features of a diamond is that about 25 to 30 percent of them fluoresce under ultraviolet light. So kind of a neat test that can be done is we put it under this equipment here that's enclosed and it has an ultraviolet light in it. Cubic zirconias will not fluoresce and moissanite uh, will usually fluoresce orange, where uh, diamonds will fluoresce some degree of blue. Not all diamonds, um, but some of them. So if you see blue fluorescence, um, chances are it's a diamond, pending you know other tests. So we're just going to put this in here and take a look. So you can't count this as uh, proof positive, but because um, about 75% of diamonds don't fluoresce at all, and a very rare number of diamonds do fluoresce yellowish to orangish, but uh, you won't see blue fluorescence in a moissanite or a cubic zirconia. And uh, so the next time you go into Spencer Gifts or one of those um, shops where they have uh, black lights and posters. Take a look at your diamond. You might be surprised to see it glowing uh, bright blue. So of course since we're removing the diamond anyway to uh, put the new prongs on here, uh, we can uh, take it out of the setting and weigh it while you're here. So I'll invite you to come back and uh, visit our goldsmith and you can watch him remove the diamond. Going to come here. We're actually checking to make sure that there aren't any uh, chips or problems that you might foresee before you remove it, I'm assuming. Yeah, oh yes, definitely. Just checking it over to make sure. And I also have to see the strength of the prongs because uh, I, when I'm prying them away you don't want to risk the stone at all so I need to know exactly what I'm dealing with and how I should tackle removing it as best possible. Sometimes if I can't get under them I have to grind them off the prongs which I'm going to do right now. As you can see the one prong was pretty strong so mm -hmm. with the base but they're not so strong on top. No, no, no. no. It's uh, it is definitely worn and uh, But I'm just making it a little easier to deal with, as you can see. That came off pretty easy. And that should do it. Okay, then we have the diamond. And we will take it 
out there and we will weigh it. So we have our diamond scale here and we're going to weigh the diamond. So while we have the diamond out of the setting, uh, we can also get uh, an accurate measurement of the depth of the diamond. So, so I'm just going to put the diamond in the millimeter gauge, and the depth is 4.10 millimeters. So we know the diameter of the largest diameter, the smallest diameter, and the depth. We know that it has a strong fluorescence. Um, we know that there are some very minor little nicks on the, some of the facet edges. Um, we also know that this does not have a, a laser engraved serial number on the edge of the girdle, but it is a polished girdle and it is not faceted, which is kind of unusual. So, as you can see, there really are many ways that you can positively identify your diamond. You just have to know what you have. And when you leave a diamond here at Mills Jewelers for repair, it never leaves the premises, for one thing. It's fully insured, and we always take the time to fully document exactly what you have so you're leaving with all the information that you need to positively identify your diamond.